Hey, what is going on guys? This video is going to be about tips for renting for a tenant. There's a lot of videos out there for landlords when renting out their properties, what things to look out for, how to screen tenants, but there's not too many videos for tenants when they're looking to rent a property. This video is going to be more so geared towards that and ways you can save money and find a good property for yourself. Tip number one, you need to make a list of must haves that you cannot live without. This is going to become essentially your base search for which you're going to look at rentals. And the rental market conditions in your area will determine how many must haves you can have. In an area with 30 available rental units would allow for a lot more flexibility and choice on your end compared to an area that only has three houses available for rent, obviously. Tip number two, again, depending on where you live, try to see as many places as you can on the market because it's important to know your options and understand what the going rates are. This is how you can find the best deal. You can check Kijiji or Craigslist as well because they have a lot of amazing deals that sometimes aren't even listed on realtor.ca. Tip number three, when it comes time to submit an application, make sure you have all the information and documents ready. And as a realtor and a landlord myself, I want to know a little bit about the potential tenant and also make sure they're able to make the rent payments every month. Aside from the rental application, you need to have an ID, proof of employment, credit check, references, etc. All the standard things. What I would say is super important from a tenant is to be prepared and have everything ready. As soon as you see a property, send that rental application right away. Send all the documents right away. Don't wait. If you're living in a city center like Toronto, time is extremely valuable and there are hundreds if not thousands of people looking to rent every single month. You don't want to wait around even a few days after you see the property. You want to lock it in quickly because there's always going to be someone coming in right after you to put an offer. Tip number four, always be willing to negotiate the price and terms to get a better deal. Some people are really shy. Don't be shy. The listed price is almost always higher than what the landlord actually wants and is okay with. In almost every situation I've seen, the tenant can reduce the price just by asking. Same thing with the terms written out in the lease. Carefully read through them, and if there's something that you want added or modified, say something. If you're working with a realtor, let your realtor know. If you're working directly with the landlord, make sure you communicate this. The terms and conditions are not set in stone, and they're fully negotiable. You need to keep in mind your local landlord and tenant boards to make sure that the clauses that the landlord has put in the lease agreement are by law. And you want to make sure if, if there's anything in there out of the ordinary that you flag it and bring that up. Obviously, if you need legal help, seek guidance, ask a lawyer, ask a professional to help you out. There's a lot of rules. For example, in, here in Ontario, it's only permitted for the landlord to ask for the first and last as a deposit. By law, the landlord cannot ask for three or four months of rent paid up front. Negotiations don't have to be limited to the price either. They can be for the term of the lease or even the start date. If you see a landlord is on the fence and you really want one specific place, you can offer the landlord to start the lease sooner, even though you're not able to actually move in until two or three weeks later. Every single day that the place or the landlord's place is empty, vacant, is lost money for the landlord. Landlords love it when they can rent it out sooner and have less vacancy. Or another example is if you know you're going to be renting there for a long period of time, offer to sign a longer term. Typically it's one year, you can sign for more. Looking for and finding tenants is a long and tedious process for landlords. So if they know they can secure a lease for a longer period of time with a good tenant, two wins. They might be enticed to take it. Tip five, document everything all communication between you and the landlord starting before the lease actually begins. Don't wait until the lease starts. I've seen many arguments arise after the tenant moves in because some things were discussed before signing and then later on they weren't followed through on. For example, when the landlord says the stove and microwave are going to be included in the lease, write that down, add that in the contract. 
if the tenant shows up and there's no microwave, you actually have no legal way to prove that the landlord said that, even if there was a third party present as a witness. In real estate, verbal promises are almost impossible to prove. Once again, after everything is done, review everything word by word and get every single thing in writing. Tip number six, allow the landlord to perform inspections, but don't let them harass you. There's some landlords that are easygoing and barely check up on you, which can be nice, but it also has its downsides. Like for example, if there's maintenance issues and things that need, need fixing, the landlord's a little bit harder to get a hold of in that situation. On the other end of the spectrum, there's landlords that are gonna be checking up on you bi-weekly or even on a weekly basis. Again, refer to your local landlord and tenant laws and make sure you know your rights. Tip seven, before you move in, take pictures of everything. The wall, the cabinet, the stove, all the furniture, if it's furnished, the appliances that come with it. Make sure you highlight any areas where there's any existing damage so that when later on you're moving out or the landlord does an inspection, comes in, you don't get penalized for any damages that were there before you even moved in. Make sure you document everything, take pictures, and send it over to the landlord as well. Tip eight, last one, is establish a good relationship with the, your landlord. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to be best friends with your landlord, but being on good terms is a plus because it will help things like repairs get done faster. And also having a disgruntled landlord or someone you're not really too happy to deal with can be very difficult to deal with over the duration of your lease. So try to maintain a positive relationship with them. All right guys, those are my eight tips for tenants when looking at properties in order to save you a little bit of money and make your process a little bit easier. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Also, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video. See you guys in the next one. Thanks.